Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I'm taking another detour around the Judges series. And we're going to do, well, I'm going to do a short study on the living creatures. The Bible records that in the book of Revelation, there is an angelic type living creature. But in Genesis, there are mention of living creatures on the earth. We're going to take a look at them. Some of them are probably two-legged and some are four-legged. Uh, for example, apes are two-legged creatures, right? And they're, they're living creatures. So let's take a look. And this is probably going to be a two-part series because I'm going to do where the Bible talks about the beast. Of course, there's going to be a the beast of Revelation. But there are other beasts in Scripture. Most of them have four legs. Some have more le four legs minus two. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to post that on this particular platform. I don't believe so. So, we'll see what happens. All right. Uh, first mention in the King James Bible is usually a good indication of what a word or a phrase has reference to and let's take a look all right in genesis chapter 1 starting in verse 21 and god created great whales and every living creature and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. God wants us to multiply after our kind. Very important. That's why he said, don't sow your garden with divers things because you don't want the tomato plants trying to fertilize your eggplants. Two different things. God doesn't seem to particularly care for hybrid things because, you know, a lot of hybrid vegetables will not produce seeds. You have to buy seeds from the seed company, which will remain nameless. But let's just say the first syllable, uh, well, the name starts with an M and the first syllable is Mon. Yeah. So let's skip down to verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing. So cattle are considered a living, living creature. C cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth. Beast of the earth after his kind and it was so. Genesis 9 and verse 10. And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, 
All right, so of the fowl, if you don't know what a fowl is, it's a, it's a bird. Of the cattle, and of every beast, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Now, a lot of uh, a lot of times people think that there was just two of every uh, creature or beast on the ark. Well, there was at least two of every creature on the ark of every unclean animal but of clean animals there were seven pairs because let's face it if they would have sacrificed the clean animals uh, and there was only two well oh, that species extinct that's gone so I don't know so there are times when the Word of God uses creature, and then there's times that it uses beast. Maybe this would be a good time to define those words via Strong's. Well, I'm going to do it later. Uh, sometimes I have to turn the computer off and turn uh, kill the internet connection. Computer's been going nuts lately. The hard drive just starts spinning like crazy. Computer starts getting hot. And uh, when I take a look at what's running, sometimes it shows me nothing unusual is running with the computer, but something's going through it. Well, they're, they're going to hear a lot about Jesus. That's what can I tell you. So I'm going to do the, the beast and the living creature thing at the end of the this little study thing. Yeah, the task manager shows you what's running on your computer. So. All right, let's go to the book of Leviticus. Uh, Leviticus was specifically written for the Levites, which was one of the 12 tribes. They were the tribe set apart by the Lord to serve him. They were to be the priests. Moses, the lawgiver, well, the one that Mo well God gave the law to. He, they cons God actually is the lawgiver, but he gave it to Moses and Moses gave it to Israel. Moses and Aaron were of the tribe of Levi. And Leviticus was the way that the Levitical priesthood was to approach the Lord in worship and sacrifice with the tabernacle. So in Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 44, we read, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God, Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Now remember, this is written after Israel left Egypt. Let's see. Verse 46. This is the law of the beasts. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl, and of every living creature, living creature that moveth in the waters, and every creature that creepeth upon the earth. You ever wonder uh, 
you know, creatures that creep is considered unclean. You ever heard the expression? Ladies, you probably have. Oh, that guy, he's a creep. I suspect that's where that expression came from. So, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between, ah, to make a difference, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Now, Jesus said, it's not what goes into our mouths that defile a man, but rather what comes out of our mouths. You know, our your thoughts control what you say and speak, right? So, I believe these dietary health laws of the clean and unclean foods were for our health. And of course, obedience is pretty important too. All right, let's take a look. In Ezekiel chapter 1, the, um, it looks like, well, I guess we could read Ezekiel 1. You could probably read the whole thing. All right, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. There are people that are UFO enthusiasts that'll tell you that, uh, oh yeah, this is talking about UFOs, the gods that came down from the sky. They love to tell you that, but I don't think so. Well, to them, God would be an unidentified flying object, but uh, yeah. Is he from another realm? Yeah, absolutely. So, Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chebar, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. The captives, what happened? Well, God had had a belly full of his people's disobedience, so he allowed them to go into captivity. You can read about that in um, Jeremiah, for one. Verse 2, In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest. So Ezekiel is a Levite, a Levitical priest. Uh, unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. So it looks like the fire is just going, maybe it's kind of like a circle enfolding itself, ah, you know. Verse 5. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Living creatures. Four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had 
four faces and everyone had four wings and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled with the color of burnished brass and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides and they four had their faces and their wings their wings were joined one to another they turned not when they went they went everyone straight forward if there is one book in the Bible that I would uh, nominate for the wildest book this is it verse 10 as for the likeness of their faces they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side and they four had the face of an ox on the left side they four also had the face of an eagle now some Bob's note here uh, Judah's symbol was the lion uh, another one of the there were uh, all right there was when you look at the the way the armies of Israel were set up you had three tribes on the north three on the south three on the east three on the west and I forget the exact makeup of it I'd have to look it up but it was basically in the shape of a cross and and on every for all these you know three on the north three on the south three on the east three on the west there was one tribe that had the preeminence and as I understand the man was represented by one tribe the lion was represented by another tribe Judah then you had one tribe that was like an uh, represented by an ox and then another represented by an eagle and that's I would have a hard time proving all this from just the scriptures alone I mean I can prove uh, the lion of Judah that's easy but the other ones I've read it for commentaries but to find it in the Bible I don't know but that's what I'm I am guessing what these four faces represent so verse uh, let's see 11 thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward two wings of every one were joined one to another and two covered their bodies and they went everyone straight forward whither the spirit was to go they went and they turned not when they went as for the likeness of the living creatures the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps it went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning hmm you know it makes you wonder was there like a flash of lightning and it's there and and then a light flash of lightning and it's there and here there and you know just moving around I, I don't know that's uh, what I seem to hear uh, read into this but I don't know your guess is as good as mine now as I beheld the living creatures behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces the appearance of the wheels 
and their work was like unto the color of a barrel and they four had one likeness and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel when they went they went upon their four sides and they turned not when they went as for their rings they were so high that they were dreadful and their rings were full of eyes round about them four I'm telling you this is a wild book 19 and when the living creature went the wheels went by them and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth the wheels were lifted up whithersoever the spirit was to go they went thither was their spirit to go and the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creatures uh, the living creature was in the wheels when those went these went and when those stood these stood and when those were lifted up from the earth the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretch forth over their heads above and under the firmament were their wings straight the one toward the other everyone had two which covered on his side on this side and everyone had two which covered on that side their bodies and they went and i and uh and they went i heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host, when they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament was that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it hmm Christ Christ uh, on the throne and I saw as the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about within it from the appearance of his loins even upward and from the appearance of his loins even downward I saw as it were the appearance of fire and it had brightness round about as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain so was the appearance of the brightness round about this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spake. You know, you, uh, I did a series on fire. And I, you know, there's just so many themes that run through the Bible. It's, it's, it's hard not to go down. Oh, there's so many roads to go down. In Ezekiel 28, 14, it talks about stones of fire. So let's read Ezekiel 28, 14. Just, just one verse. Uh, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I think this is talking about Satan who covered God's throne. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee the, so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. 
thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Yeah, there you go. Stones of fire. And if you're interested, you can read Ezekiel 28, you know, by yourself. I mean, I've covered this. Uh, let's see, what did I... 14. Well, maybe we'll read a couple. Verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Not born, created. The angels were created. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. What, what, what kind of violence? Well, there was a war in heaven. Wars are violent. Oh, yeah. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Wow. And then in 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. You know, Satan's an angel of light, right? Reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Yeah, I cover this in depth in other studies. If anybody's interested, you know, let me know. All right, let's take a look at, let's see, we covered Ezekiel 1. And then in Ezekiel 3.13, we're just going to read this one verse. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures, living creatures that touched one another and the noise of the wheels over against them and a noise of a great rushing. Let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 10. All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 10. This is going to give you some information. Let's, I guess we'll read the whole chapter. Why not? Verse 1. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were, a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Now, one of the foundation stones of New Jerusalem is a sapphire. So, is he seeing something from that's going to be revealed in the future? I think so. Verse 2. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire. Coals of fire. Didn't we read just read about the uh, stones of fire? Oh, yeah. Now, if memory serves me correctly, cherub is singular and cherubims is plural, more than one. So when they were talking about the anointed cherub, singular, Satan, but when they're talking about these living creatures, plural, cherubim, right? I think so, without spending a lot of time looking this stuff up. Uh, and he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire, coals of fire from between the cherubims, and scatter them over the city. And he went in, in my sight. Now this is uh, fire coming down from heaven upon the earth. That's 
that's mentioned in Revelation too. Uh, let's see. Verse 3. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house and the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. Now there was a cloud that uh, led Israel in the wilderness in the book of Exodus by day and a pillar of fire by night. And when King Solomon dedicated the temple, there was a cloud, brightness. So, you know, you've got uh, symbolism, a lot of symbolism. I think I did a, yeah, I did a Bible study on clouds and fire. They're on the playlist. Anybody interested? A lot of information, a lot. Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the Lord of, uh, of the house. I'm sorry. And the house stood over the threshold of the house and the house was filled with the cloud and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court as the voice of the almighty God when he speaketh. And it came to pass that when he had commanded the man clothed with linen, saying, Take fire, take fire from between the wheels, from between the cherubims, then he went in and stood beside the wheels. And one cherub stretched forth his hand from between the cherubims unto the fire that was between the cherubims, and took thereof, and put it into the hands of him that was clothed with linen, who took it and went out. And there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a barrel stone. So, you know, these are God's angels. They might be called living creatures, but there is no negative connotation attached to being called a living creature. I mean, they're, they're cherubs. Cherubim. Verse 10. And as for their appearances, these they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. And they went, they went upon their four sides, they turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked, they followed it. They turned not as they went. And their whole body, and their backs, and their hands, and their wings, and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. And, uh, I'm sorry, verse 13, As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel. And every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. The second face was the face of a man. The third and the third the face of a lion. And the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Chebar. So these living creatures... It tells you right here in verse 15, And the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Chebar, which was in chap chapter 1. So it tells you that these living creatures were cherubims. They are uh, an order or a class of angels. So, there you go. All right, we may as well read the whole chapter. Verse 16, And when the cherubims went, the wheels went by them. And when the cherubims lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the same wheels also turned not from beside them. 
when they stood, these stood, and when they were lifted up, these lifted up. All right, 17. When they stood, these stood, and when they were lifted up, these lifted up themselves also, for the spirit of the living creature was in them. Then the glory of the Lord departed from off the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubims. And the cherubims lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth in my sight. When they went out, the wheels also were beside them, and everyone stood at the door of the east gate of the Lord's house. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Chebar, and I knew that they were cherubims. Everyone had four faces apiece, and every one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings, and the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Chebar. Their appearance, appearances in themselves, they went everyone straight forward. Some wild stuff, huh? All right, the Hebrew word for uh, creature uh, is translated soul 475 times, life 117 times, person 29 times, mind 15, heart 15, creature 9, body, himself, yourselves, dead, will, desire, man, themselves, any appetite, and then a bunch of times miscellaneous. So it's, it's, um, sometimes it refers to a living being, something that breathes, the inner being of a man, uh, the soul. Sometimes, uh, emotions or the activities of the mind or will. And then there's some dubious uh, connotations there. Uh, beast has a lot of the same type of connotations as creature, living creature. A lot of the same type of things. So the problem is going to these word definitions, lexicons, a lot of times you're getting word definitions from people that are not even believers. Uh, one is the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon. One of them, I forget which one is which, one of them was kicked out of his own uh, Bible, his own denomination because he was too, well, he didn't believe the Bible. One of them said that uh, it was impossible for Jesus to have fulfilled all the Messianic prophecies. Impossible. So it couldn't have happened. I mean, and that's what got him kicked out. I mean, here it is. You're supposed to be a theologian training people, and you don't believe what? You don't believe it? Well, get out of here. Yeah, get the hell out of here. That's what these denominations needed to do was get the hell out of there. You know, they're evil. And yet, the Brown Drivers Briggs lexicon is an absolute standard in a lot of Bible colleges. Well, seminar Bible cemeteries, not college. Bible cemeteries, yeah. You know, I wonder how much Hebrew and uh, Koine Greek, which is what the New Testament was written in, how much of that is a dead language? You know, the King James Bible people who translated the Bible were scholars. But more importantly, they were believers. There, There's a difference. All these modern people, so... All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Keep tuned for part two, which I'm going to have to post elsewhere because I'm sure uh, other people have covered the same type of material. 
and it just seems to vanish from you know where. So, all right. All glory to God. Amen.